So it marks the same time, the eagle marks okay. the same time of the year as the Scorpio. And so the Scorpio has always had a dual personality, if you will. Ground, right? And well the and, and the other side being the eagle, because the scorpion crawls on the ground and the eagle flies wow. in the sky. Wow. See? And so that's kind of that symbolism that's that's contained here. So when you see the eagle, it, it represents the time of the the annual year and the time of the cosmic year. Oh. That is the same thing as the scorpion. Okay. okay. And so what happened was about 18,000 years ago, the vernal equinox moved into the constellation of Scorpio, and the planets then went for 2,000 years into the coldest it's been in about 100,000 years. That was what they call it was the, the great winter came on the world during the age of Scorpio, which represents in astrology the sign of death, right? So the great winter came into the great into the into the world. The glaciers grew. So all of where we're standing now, we were under under the ice. This was buried in ice. But going north, if you're up into Canada, the ice was a mile and two miles thick, and it reached from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. And that was the that was the winter, the depth of the great year, that represented by the time that the vernal equinox was moving through Scorpio. Two thousand years later, when it began to move into the constellation of Virgo, the planet started to warm. When it began to warm, the glaciers started to shrink back about 2,000 years while that vernal equinox, the cosmic clock hand was moving through the sky by 30 degrees, 30 degrees, because each of those represents on average 30 degrees, right? Then the planet started warming, but at 13,000 years ago, as the, the vernal equinox was moving from Virgo into Leo, that's when the shit hit the fan. The shit hit the fan and something, some energy source, which has not been identified, caused enormous amounts of this huge mass of ice to suddenly melt away. And when it melted away, you had the great cleansing floods that washed off the ice and came out from under the ice, and sea levels worldwide came up 400 feet as the ice disappeared. So you gotta bear in mind that in the antediluvian or pre-flood world, the sea levels were 400 feet lower, which exposed all the continental shelves of the planet and that's where civilization from. And this is what they haven't figured out is, look you guys, civilization during the Ice Age would have thrived at sea level. And that's 400 feet underwater now. It's drowned. And that sea level rising was, a, was an energetic thing. It wasn't a gentle. It was energetic. Whatever was there was quickly removed within probably a few years of the sea level rising to that left. So, what I'm trying to do is get people to understand that, yeah, there was like a great cleansing or erasure of the former world that happened at the end of the last ice age. And during that age of Leo, coming out of the age of Leo, it's the planet, it's like when the dust settled, and it literally, there are places in the dust, we're going to be going and looking at places, you see this stuff called lux. It's a very unusual type of topsoil that nobody can figure out its origin. But you'll see it settled on top of flood sediments, six and eight feet and more thick. And this was the stuff that was in the atmosphere that had to settle out because during this period of time, the world was shrouded in darkness. And then it finally had to clear, and when it cleared, the sun reappeared. The sun returned. And then this literally happened. This isn't like somebody's bullshit that they made up. I mean, this is really now quite well established scientifically. But people as a whole are completely oblivious and unaware of it. And the media doesn't talk about it, and if you do talk about it, establishment scientists will basically come and try to say, you're some kind of quack, or you're a pseudoscientist, or you're a fringe, or you know, whatever. To just basically ignore and keep people from understanding that this kind of thing happened. And this is really the game we're playing, because one of the key traditions that's been handed down through all of the ages by these various groups of people has concerned the tempo, has concerned the, the knowledge of this cosmic clock. And where are the points of vulnerability within that cosmic clock where this planet now becomes vulnerable? And when the cosmos is going to shift gears again. And when it shifts gears, what happens is, see, we used to think the old model, like when I was a kid, the planet, we're living in a planet that's basically isolated in space with nothing else out there except the moon, there's the moon, and then the nearest planet being Mars and Venus, yeah. and then Mercury, and, and but what, now, 
the model has shifted, right? And the model, the current model, really is more consistent with the archaic model, which is that outside of Pluto, there's this vast zone of hundreds of billions of comets. And those comets are the little spermatozoan that brought the genetic material here in the first place, but they're also the agents by which the planet gets destroyed from time to time. See, well, not completely yeah. destroyed. Not, no, not completely destroyed. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say the world gets destroyed, yeah, not yeah. the planet, yeah. because that's the difference. This is the world, the order of things now. When this was all buried under ice, that was a different world. Yeah. See? You know, when you go up there on those rocks and you see those ripples that were on the bottom of a shallow sea, that's a different world. The planet, it's the same planet, but a different world. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, man. This is what we're doing. This is the thing we're trying to get out. And, and, and when I went on Joe Rogan back uh, in October with Graham Hancock, that podcast that we did talking about this stuff was the most watched podcast in the nation. And that tells me something right there, that people are right. And I challenge people. I say, look, you know, I don't care if you're saying bullshitting, but if you're saying bullshitting, then back it up. Just prove what I'm saying. Go out there, like I have done, and talk to scientists and read their papers and go out in the field and, and show me where I'm wrong. Show me where, where, because the cutting edge science now is saying, yeah, they've, they've looked and they've realized that at 12,900 years ago, halfway exactly through the cycle, a culture in North America disappeared, the Clovis culture. Right? There's a whole culture and it's very, very distinct. It's identifiable by its by its spear tips and its tool kits and, and its life ways. And all of a sudden, within a generation, the most 10 years or maybe even a year, 25 archaeological sites around North America where they were uh, occupying, they were gone instantly. At the same time, they disappeared. All the great megafauna on Earth disappeared. Yeah. Especially in North America. Half yeah. the great megafauna yeah. of the Earth disappeared. <clears throat> because you go south of here, and you get free of where the glaciers were, you had lions the size of horses, you had camels, you had four different kinds of elephants living in North America, right? You had beavers the size of Volkswagen beetles, you had armadillos just as big. And the list goes on and on. Half of these, half of these guys around the entire world disappeared at the same time the Cold Sculpture did. At the same time, from some unknown source, a tremendous pulse of energy caused this flash melting of the great glaciers. And the floods came off, and they sculpted the landscape from here to the Pacific Ocean. The city, like I told you, the city of Portland is built upon a delta that was washed out. It's got material from Canada, from Washington, from Idaho, from Montana, all down the Columbia Gorge, and that stuff is piled up, and the city of Portland was built on top. And that stuff that it's built on is literally, literally, the wreckage of the former world. And we've built our new world on top of the wreckage without realizing that under our feet are lost worlds. And they go back, and now, I see, this is part of the Great Awakening. We're suddenly gonna realize that, number one, the true history of man on this planet is not 5,000 years old. It's 50 or 100 or 200,000 years old. And secondly, we're not an exclusively terrestrial being. That's the other thing. Those two things coming together, becoming part of the widespread consciousness of people today, would, would massively cause a shift. Especially the realization that, just like a lot of teachers have been saying, Gurdjieff and, 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 and Vivekananda and, and Sri Aurobindo, and the list goes on, who said, we're living at the end of a cosmic age. Time's running out. We can't just sit there and twiddle our thumbs and be obsessed with this trivia. Like, it doesn't really matter who the fuck becomes president, right? It's not going to matter because if the planet gets its, even, even a, 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 a fraction of what happened 13,000 years ago, game's over. Game's over. So that's all I got to say for the moment. I got to have a. <laughs> oh.